Okay, we are going to get started with our February Club Q kit called I Love Everything About You. I love these colors. It's kind of fun colors that we don't normally do. It's we used some purples this month and we don't get to use purples very often, so I'm excited about this line. This new line is called Venice and it will be eventually available as a paper pack as well. And to get started, I would keep your directions kind of out and handy so that you can look at the photo. There's a clear photo on the front and there are ink suggested, uh, coal miner, sugar plum, and lovely lilac. There's also lots of blues that you could use. So if you don't want this as purple as we have it, there is blueberry bliss, um, sky blue, navy, lots of different blues that you can use. And we are going to get started by doing our cutting diagrams and getting all the cutting out of the way. Uh, some of our kits have more cutting than others. We try to have a lot of it in lasers for you. One thing I wanna mention about this kit is I actually kept all of my die cuts in the master sheet so that I can punch them out and use them as I go. Um, if you would rather punch them out, that is fine. I just know that with ones that have lots of different size flowers and stuff like that, I tend to wait until I need them to punch them out of the master sheet. So that is totally up to you. We are going to get started. I love this kit because it also uses some of the vellum that we haven't used for a while. There's um, vellum script behind here. And it also gives you lots of options for um, colors. So purples, blues, charcoal, um, grays, um, lots, of, lots of different colors that you can choose here. So we are going to get this sample out of the way here and we will get started on our cutting diagrams. Before I get my cutter in here, I'm going to switch these out to our background papers. So go ahead and move your background papers in there and we'll kind of work on both of them as we go. Just make sure that you can see both of those. And we'll kind of use some of the pieces as we go. Now I'm going to move my trimmer in. I'm going to get all my cutting done at one time. So at the beginning here, it says to cut two 12 by 12 papers. We'll have a blue one and a gray one. These are the 12 by 12s. We will do that next. That's the diagram there. Uh, we are going to cut the five and three quarter by 11. There is a white piece of five and three quarter by 11, and we're going to cut them into three, three and three quarters by five and three quarter pieces. So let's start with this one. We're going to put it into our trimmer. It's already five and three quarters this way. So we are gonna put it into our trimmer and cut it at three and three quarters. Trim that down. Move it down, get another one, three and three quarters. And then you have three. I'm gonna write three and three quarters by five and three quarters. So you definitely don't wanna write on yours, but I'm writing this just so you can see which ones we're going to grab later when we go to use them. So go ahead and set those aside. So you're 10 by four and a half. You'll want it at the six and a half mark and trim. So four and a half by six and a half. And then this is three and a half. This is the piece that comes off the end. 
by four and a half. Okay, and we'll set those aside and we'll grab those later when we need them. And the other cutting that needs to be done on this is the cutting diagrams that we have here. So go ahead and grab, we will do, I'm gonna slide this underneath here. We will do the light blue 12 by 12. And we are actually going to cut off the two 12 inch pieces first. So the two by 12s, we need two of those. Actually, you know what? It, it doesn't really matter which one we cut off first because there's lots of extra space here. I'm just gonna go ahead and do it just like the diagram and cut at five inches here. So take it to five. And trim all the way down. And then take that same piece. We need a five by seven, so it's at five already. You take it to the seven mark and trim. So this one is the five by seven. We'll push this down and then we'll make the four by five. So it's already at five inches. We wanna to go to four and trim. And then there's a little piece extra that you can throw away. This one is a four by five. Let's set those aside until we need them. Okay, and then on this last piece here, we just need two inch strips, two two inch strips. So go ahead and put them into the two mark. Slide it down to the two mark. Oh, oh. it's a good thing we have extra paper because I just cut it at three. So we just need two two inch pieces. It's not often that we have extra paper, so I'm glad that we do on that one. So two by 12 inch. Put those to the side. Now let's pull out our other diagram, which it looks like we have extra space on here too. So we will cut the four by six and the four by three. What I'm gonna do is just slide it into my trimmer like this and go to four inches, trim all the way down, turn it, Trim it at six. And then it's already at four inches, so you take this other piece to the three and you'll have a four by three. With an extra piece left over, and this is actually a good size for a little photo backer, so if you wanna save it, you can. So we have our four by three and our four by six. With the piece that is left, we can slide it in and we just need three, three and a quarter by five and a quarter. So we are gonna go to five and a quarter. Trim all the way down. This is an extra piece you can save if you would like to. We're going to turn it at three and a quarter. and trim, oops, three and a quarter again, and three and a quarter again. And a little extra piece. So these are all three and a quarter by five and a quarter. Put those in a little pile. And then I think we are done with our trimmer, so I'm gonna move that out of the way. I'll keep it handy just in case, but I think we are completely done with the actual trimmer. And the other pieces that need to be cut, which I have already trimmed out on mine, and feel free to stop the video at any point and do some trimming, some chalking, whatever you need to do. That's what's great about having a video is that you can do it at your own pace. Uh, the next piece I cut out were the vellum pieces. There's a light gray line around each of these. 
go ahead and cut those out. It can be just kind of a rough cut. It's gonna be covered by a frame, so no need to make it super straight or be really particular about it. It's gonna be covered. So go ahead and cut those out. The other two pieces, or three pieces, I guess, is your journaling piece and then your two little banner banners that are gonna go with your um, die cut that says everything. So go ahead and trim those out. And once you are done with that, let me make sure that this is actually in, everything's in the picture for you. Okay, and once you are done with that, we are going to get started with our layout here and we're going to work mostly on page one. I'm gonna keep both of them out here because I have space, but mostly on page one and we are gonna do the vellum frames with the um, little crescent pieces around it. So in our die cut, you can see there's different crescent pieces in here. There's some that have kind of a straight blunt edge. Those are the ones that we are going to use for the frame around the vellum piece. So I'm punching those out first the ones that have the straight ends. And you can see some of the other crescents that are on here, they have a real pointy edge. We'll use those for the other page. So the ones that have more of a straight edge there, punch those out. it's easier to just clip them out with your scissors you can do that too and then I'm gonna move this out of the way and we're gonna get our vellum going okay so your vellum you can see one has with the curve up here one has the script going this way the other one has the script if you if you get them mixed up then this will be upside down so you want to have them like this. And I am going to use a glue pin to put this on. I'm just going to make a little right around the edge there so that it sticks to the vellum. It doesn't have to be completely covered. I'm just going to put this frame right around the vellum. And then I'm gonna move that up there and we'll glue that down in a minute. It's gonna be about three quarters of an inch from the top. This bottom one, we are going to do the same thing. I'm just gonna put a little adhesive around this very edge here so that it sticks to the vellum. Because of course you do not want to put adhesive onto your vellum, it will show through. So you put it onto the frame and put that right over the edge of the vellum. And this does not have to be perfect. You can see here I have it. It doesn't go all the way to the edge of the crescent here. Um, this one might look a little different on the back. This one goes closer to the edge. It's totally fine. It doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be perfect. And if you want to, a lot of times when I'm doing my layouts, I will get everything kind of laid out on my paper and then glue it down. Um, if you want to glue as you go, that's totally fine too. These pieces, um, I am just going to lay on here and kind of layer on top of it. But when you do go to glue this down, you only want to put adhesive on the crescent part, on the actual paper part. If you put adhesive on the vellum, it's going to show through and it looks a little, um, it looks a little messy because you can see the, the um, adhesive through there. So make sure you only put the adhesive uh, behind the paper part. Let me get this lined up here. And then we will work on layering the pieces onto there. So in your diagram and your di I'm sorry, your cutting diagram, you have two two inch pieces and we are going to add those next. The 
first two inch piece is going to go about two and three quarters inches up from the bottom. So if you want to measure that, you can. Two and three quarters inch. Oops. And that's just about right. So two and three quarters inch up from the bottom. And then the next one is about three inches down from the top. Let's put that at three inches. And that will go there. And then this will tell you kind of where you need to do that because you don't want the ends of the crescent showing. Okay, so we have that on. And as we go, chalk any of these pieces up that you would like to chalk. Um, I actually, I'll pick this up just to show what, I actually have Blueberry Bliss, which is one that was not suggested on there, but I love this color with it. Um, you can also use charcoal. If you want more purples, you can use sugar plum. But this Blueberry Bliss looks really nice too. So go ahead and if you want to just push pause, chalk things up the way you want them. Navy would be really pretty on here too. If you're wanting to stick with blues. And then that goes three inches down from the top. Once we have those on, we want to grab our three gray pieces. They're three and a quarter by five and a quarter. And then we have three white pieces that are three and three quarters by five and three quarters. And these all get a gray piece on the front. So again, chop these up. If you want to do purple, I do have sugar plum here. There's also lovely lilac if you want to use something that's not quite as bold as this one. You can do some purple, some blue, some coal miner. They all match really well. So whatever your preference is. And sometimes with our powder puff chalking inks, I actually like to add two colors. I just make sure and do the lighter color first so that it's not getting all over your pad. But I'm gonna go back over this with a little bit of Blueberry Bliss. And you can see it makes the purple a little darker, adds a little blue, gives it a little more of a ch blended chalky look. And then these all get centered to the back or to the front of these white. I'm just putting a little adhesive because mine's just a sample, but you can use a little more adhesive on yours. Centered in the middle. And then these go, what I usually do on these also, I usually put the outside ones on first where I want it. So I'll go ahead and do that. The outside ones just barely in from the edge and centered between the strips. And then I center this one in the middle here. So I get the outside ones on and then center the last one in the middle. And from there, we will add some embellishments to this page. And the tricky thing on this one is there's so many flowers to choose from. But typically, if we can fit it on the laser when we're designing it, we will try and put like um, page one kind of all grouped together um, and then page two kind of all grouped together. It doesn't always work out that way on the laser, but just so you know, for future kits, we try to keep the flowers that go together in one little area. And then if some are for another page, we keep those in another area on the laser. And that's if we can. Um, 
But for page one, we need a large flower, a little bit smaller flower, and a little bit smaller. So just by looking at this, it looks like we will need, and this is where I layer things first. And then if I need to switch it up, I can. I don't glue it all together yet. So I have one big flower, one a little bit smaller where we use the blue side. And again, choose choose what's, not a lot of the um, print shows, but you can choose whichever one, whichever side you want to use. So we have a little bit smaller on the blue side. And then from there, even one that's a little bit smaller and we'll flip it over and use the printed side. On the outsides of that flower, we have two medium flowers on the blue side and then two of the smallest, I don't know if you can see that, two of the smallest ones on the printed side. And if you like the blue side better, go ahead and flip those over and you can use it like that as well. And we have these little flourishes. This is one reason too that I keep them in the master laser because these ones get a little bit hung up. They get a little bit hung up together and they're kind of hard to get apart. So, let me flip this over so I can look at my Sometimes it's easiest to look at the actual instructions to see where things go. And it looks like we have one of these, just little single ones that goes up the top. This one goes, and I'm just barely placing these down now so that I can use a little glue pen and make sure that they're in their spots first. and a medium one over here. And you can always, depending on the pictures that you put in here, you can always switch these up a little bit and move things around so that you're not covering important parts of your picture as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and punch these out because these will be used on the other page. those aside and have those ready for the second page. Now with your flowers, one little trick that I like to do, and ours are chopped in the sugar plum and the blue is chopped in the, maybe the blue, or the coal miner, I think. But I'm gonna use sugar plum and maybe Blueberry Bliss, or actually I have Coal Miner here, I'll use a Coal Miner too. And I just chalk up the very edges of them because that's really all that's gonna show. But one thing I do with these flowers is I take each petal and I just crease it in the middle. And this gives a really fun layered little extra dimension look. And when you put that up there, you can see now it kind of brings it off the page a little bit. I'm gonna use, I think we have a coal miner here. So a dark gray on my blue flower. And there's lots of colors that match this. So you just choose from your powder puff stash and decide what you would like to do. And again, I just crease these. And that goes on top. And then I'll use the sugar plum to add some more purple. And if you really want the blues to come out, go ahead and use 
a blue. I know that Blueberry Bliss is one that would look really nice on here. So you can see that gives like just a couple extra layers in there. Once you get these adhered, or I mean, sorry, not adhered, but once you get these um, layered together, you can go ahead and, and adhere each one together. So I put a little adhesive here, lay this one down, little adhesive here, lay this one down, press together and it'll stay together. Then we have our little buttons here. All of our embellishments come in a little brad bag like this. And then do the same to your smaller flowers. Chalk those up how you would like them. Once you get these in place and you have them so that it's not covering up your entire photos, you can adjust these. Like if you need a smaller flourish going down this side so it doesn't cover up, that's totally fine. Just grab the smaller one, switch it out. Once you get these flowers down, then you can put just a little dot of adhesive from a glue pen and tuck these in wherever you feel is the best for your pictures. Okay? So once you get all that done, your first page is complete. And a lot of times I have the second page going at the same time, but we didn't need to that time. On the second page, let's get started on that. We are going to start with the crescent pieces. So go ahead and punch out your other crescent pieces, the blue and the gray, and we're going to make it kind of like a circle. And again, chalk these up if you would like. This is kind of a cool leftover piece. If you wanted to use that for something else, you can save that. And if there is any little notches like this, you can just trim those off with your scissors. Okay, so let's place these. And this one, look at your photo on your directions, because these do not have to be exact. You just want to kind of place them. This one goes so that they kind of overlap in the corner there. And then your blue ones go on the outside of that. And it doesn't have to be exact because a lot of this is actually covered with uh, photo backers or your little journaling piece or something like that. So just kind of make sure that that is centered on your page. Once you have it placed, you can go ahead and glue those down. The word everything we are going to layer up in a second and we will get the rest of our flowers going so that they are ready. I'm gonna get rid of this outside piece. So this one, we kinda of had to mix up the flowers so that we could fit them onto the laser, but a lot of times we try to keep them so that we know what goes with each page. But this is also one reason I don't glue it down until the very end so that I can make sure that I have the pieces that I want glued together. So the word everything can come out as well. It's a little, little more delicate. And it comes out in two pieces. And just set that aside. We'll layer that up in a minute. And we'll get rid of this piece. Okay, so for the flowers, again, we're going to take one of the largest, flip it over so the print is showing the next largest on the blue side. And then the next is flipped over again like that. 
And then there's one other flower that goes here with the small on top. And again, chop those up. Fold the, if you want the extra dimension, fold up the petals. I'm just gonna put these in, kind of, well actually I'm gonna do, let's do our photo backers first. So let's grab the blue five by seven. It gets layered with the white four and a half by six and a half. And then the gray four by six. Chalk up the edges. Layer that onto your page. And feel free to glue if you go, if you'd like to. I'm just placing mine for now. And then the blue four by five, your white three and a half by four and a half. and the gray four by three. And if you need to cut this down and do like for smaller pictures, um, go ahead and cut these into any size that you want. You do not have to go exactly by the directions, do what works for you. I'm gonna leave that here. I have my journaling piece already cut out and you can chalk the edges of that if you'd like. This gets tucked in just behind it so that it covers up that corner piece up there. And then I have, of course you don't want to glue these completely down until you have your photos in. And then this goes up the side of your photo. This one goes across the bottom. Another little one that comes out the top. And then we will layer our word everything. So that goes on here. What I did on my sample was, I actually took, let's see here, sugar plum, and I did just the tops and the bottom of each letter. And again, if you don't want as much purple, just go ahead and use a gray or coal miner or, um, a blue, Blueberry Bliss, and I just did the top and the bottom of each letter. And then I'll use a little, a few dots of glue pen on here. You don't have to have it all the way around, it will stay on just with a few dots here and there. That gets layered onto your white script piece. And then we do the same with the rest of the word, just the tops. Or if you wanna change this entire thing, you can do the entire thing and do the whole letter if you would like to. I just kinda of like this kind of, it's a little bit of an ombre effect. A few dots here and there. And glue down to the backer. And then once you have your pictures in, you can move this over, have a little bit more space. This is why I don't glue things down right away. Make sure I have enough space. Your word, everything goes right at the edge of your flower here. When you glue down your word, you want to make sure and not glue the top of it because we are gonna come back in with your little word I love. That gets glued behind there. Of course, this is after you have your pictures in and about you goes down here. And then you're set. Hope you enjoyed this kit. I love these colors. Um, I hope you enjoyed February's um, Club Q kits. And I hope you enjoy March as well. They should be on the website now, so check those out. And thank you, thank you, thank you for being a Club Q member. And we will see you next time.